active. Do you understand this? Sorry? Uh, what? Oh, yeah, so sure. Uh, there's no eight here. So, oh, oh, it's eight here. Um, what are we talking about eight or four? Okay. So eight, eight enables you to get uh, string input, right? So the, in instances when, when you, you're interested in getting a string input value from a user, a piece of text, not an integer, a double, a float, for whatever reason, right? Like I gave an example of good morning and then name or something, right? Um, so you go through a systematic process of specifying or pre -allocate. This is wrong, by the way, I'm sorry. But you, you specify, I should have uploaded this, uh, I should have changed this. Instead of being abstract, let's just, uh, let's just do this. So program to accept string input. We'll do the good morning, right? Because it's still morning. It's dozing, so it's still morning. So we say the first thing we need to do is we, we start off our program the way we normally do, right? Make sure you just write the, the bits that, that are, uh, are pretty easy to get out of the way. But we first of all need to preallocate we we'll preallocate memory, right? We, we, we preallocate space in memory that's going to be used to hold the value that's going to be entered. And we do that the same way that we, we define variables. So you define a variable, like in this case, I'll just say input string, right? Input string. Uh, uh, the thing here is the variable that you use by defining is called space, right? And then the next thing that you specify after space is the size in memory that you want to pre-allocate to this. So let's say 50 bytes, for instance, because I'm thinking of characters here, yeah, 50 characters is the maximum number of some Zambian names, maybe 100 characters, right? 100 bytes or something. What I do is I go through a process of specifying the system call code that I wish to, uh, to use for me to read a string. What is the system call code for reading a string? Don't know. Okay. Five, so I'll say add i into v0. Someone said five, I don't know if they're trying to joke here or something. But you're not following, are you? Uh, if you want to read an integer, I mean a string, system call code, eight. Okay, so, so you load the value eight into v0, like I did, um, and then you you say uh, uh, load the address. Is it load the address uh, in a zero of var input? So you 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 specify the 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 address of the string that's or the location in memory that's going to hold the value that the user is going to enter. And then you specify the maximum number of characters in A1, right? Again, uh, I know about uh, what I am using here because of, of this, these details here, right? A1, number of characters, A0 is the string, placeholder, right? Um, and then I'll issue the syscall. And then uh, as good measure, again, good habit here, we just say V0 load 10 and then syscall so that we gracefully exit. But to, to, to see if, if uh, well, we'll run this to see if it's going to work, obviously. To prove that that value has actually been loaded into memory, you notice that you probably need to, uh, you probably need to, um, you will probably need to print out the string, right? So once you enter it, like I have entered it. So we've, we've written a simple program that accepts input, right? But the question is, how do we check that the input has actually been uh, how do we check that that string has actually been captured? Easy way to do it is to print it out, right? So you, you make use of system call code four to print it out, print the string that you've entered. So we'll just say we're gonna print the name, but uh, we'll, we'll do something pretty uh, interesting also. 
we will print good morning and then the value. Right, so we'll say good morning because it is a good morning. There are no uh, protests today. Good morning and then the value. So after we get the input, we'll say add i into v0. Uh, we're going to put the value 4 because we want to print the string. And then we'll load the address or into a0 of the thing that we wish to print, which is uh, input 2. And then we should see score. And then, why well, can be uh, ask or ask is it doesn't matter. One is one is now terminated. One isn't. Ask will work as well. It's also a data type. Uh, to see to see that it works, we'll leave it like this and then we'll fix it. Um, and then add i uh, v zero. You notice that here's the thing. If I leave it here, right, and run this program, it will just print good morning. Once I enter and draw something, right? Good morning. But we also want to print your name, once you enter good morning, your name or something, something like that, right? <clears throat> uh, so after we print good morning, we want to print this value that the user has entered, which is held, it is represented in memory by this variable, yeah? How do we print that? System call called for, again, right, v0. Uh, load the address in a0 of the string, and then syscall, right? Boom, done. Um, so once we do this, we load our program and execute this, and it should be able to work here. Is this fine now? So you... <laughs> You notice that this example, is, we've done a, a few things here, right? We just, we are eliciting input from the user using system call code eight because we are reading a piece of text. We are printing two pieces of text, which is why we are using system call code number four, right? Two of them twice. We print the predefined, the hard coded good morning, and then dynamically print whatever value the user enters, the name in this case. Do you understand this? No, it's, uh, it's, it's, it's how you wish to do it. It's, for me, right, when, when I'm writing, and I encourage you to do this, when you're writing code, right, you want to make sure that it's properly indented. It's easy to read. Uh, what I could have done is I could have said, uh, oh, I'll just uh, put a space afterwards here, like, so it'll work. But look at this thing, right? It, it looks horrible. Look at this. It's bad. You know, it works just fine. It's just that I like aligning, aligning things in a certain way. Like uh, if you wanted to, you could have said, uh, fine, you do this. Uh, this will work just fine. I'll run this. What the hell did I just do? There's something wrong here. Dot. Thank you. Hey, listen. You will soon go through the pain of uh, when you're running this next year. <laughs> Sometimes, you know, you spend, I remember when I was doing this for the first time, the first couple of years, right? 2008, it was very hard for me. You know, where you leave out a semicolon, right? Spending hours in the lab. What is wrong with this thing? What is wrong with this? And you know how life works, right? There are certain things that you can't easily identify, especially if you're the person writing this, but if you give it somebody else, they'll know. I would spend hours and hours. So if you hadn't told me what was wrong here, I was probably going to find it really hard to figure out what it was. Uh, unless if I always try to, I rewrite everything at once. But this works just fine, right? So what's the use of this uh, small box below? Which box? This is for the logs. If there's an error, the error comes here. We so said this. Why can we check from there? 
the logs. Like, uh, like uh, if I, if I, um, if you try to track down what's wrong with your code, if I say one, two, three, hopefully this works. I, I, I don't know if it's mostly runtime errors, but let's, let's try and see. Observe now, right? If I run this, you see, we see what just came up. The error that I had here is logged. Um, I, I mean, if you're writing a complex thing, you might want to refer to this after you execute your program so that you see exactly what happened, right? In an ideal case, it's supposed to be like a timestamp of when this error kind of happened or something, but it's because this is a simple simulator, it doesn't do that. Is this fine? Do you see the, 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 the way that we use system calls? Um, and with, with that now, we can, we can actually do, we can do this without a problem. Yes? Yes, Dr. Uh, just the previous program, we expected, is it 100? Bytes. Says 100 bytes. Now, what happens is now where maybe the characters exceed 100 bytes? Well, you'd have to know beforehand how much memory you need, which is why it's, it's you have to, make that decision. I mean, you probably run into errors. So here's the one way of doing this. Let's, um, let's see what's going to happen if we say we allocate two bytes, but we'll write uh, your name, which is more than two bytes, right? Uh, and then here we'll just say two bytes as well. 